Now let's move on to our next topic. So what exactly is virtualization? What magic VMware has done it? Right? What the what what the magic VMware has done it with the with the virtualization? So let's understand what exactly is virtualization. Now, data center virtualization is the conversion of the hardware devices in a data center into a software resources. So, what are we trying to do with virtualization? If you see, if you take out any physical server, it will have a CPU, memory, network, and hard drive. With the virtualization, what we have done or what VMware has done, they have virtualized this physical hardware devices into a software resources. That's the whole idea of virtualization. So if you see here, we have a physical server. Here we have a physical box having its own physical CPU, memory, RAM, hard drive. But now with the virtualization, that physical server has transformed or has converted or translated into a software entity called virtual machine. Now this virtual machine will have its own memory, CPU, hard drive, and network adapter, but those will be a software entities. So that's the magic of virtualization. That's another definition of virtualization. The virtualization is the process of creating virtual version of physical components, such as server, storage devices, and network devices. So if you see that, if you, if you, if you see this diagram, we have a one physical server, and there you have a hypervisor layer, or VMware software, or VMware Layer sitting on top of this hardware, and then we have a virtual machine called VM. Now, this VM, what we are doing is basically with this virtualization, what we have done, we have created a virtual version of physical component like a server. So we have converted that physical server into a software entity called virtual machine. We have converted that physical drive of that storage into a something called virtual drive. We have converted that physical switch of that physical hardware center data center into something called virtual switch. So virtualization is the process of creating virtual versions of your physical components. Virtualization refers to a technology that transforms all of transform hardware into a software. So if you see in this slide, before virtualization, what we used to have, we used to have a, a hardware box having a CPU, memory, hard drives, keyboard, network adapter, and USB spool. What we used to do on top of that hardware, we used to install a general purpose operating system like Windows or Linux. And then on top of that operating system, we were running our traditional applications. That was the way before virtualization. But what virtualization has changed? So after virtualization, if you see, we have a hardware, but on top of that hardware, now one of the key important thing to note here is, we are not installing any Windows or Linux general purpose operating system on top of this hardware. Now the first layer of software sitting on top of this hardware is something called virtualization layer or hypervisor layer. So this is the first layer or software layer which sits on top of your existing hardware. And on top of that, on top of this virtualization or hypervisor layer, we are creating a software constructs. And we call those constructs as a VM. And if you see, each VM is having its own hardware like CPU, memory, hard drive, USB, network, keyboard, mouse, etc. Each virtual machine will have its own hardware, but the only difference is this hardware is not a physical hardware anymore. It is a virtual hardware. On top of this virtual hardware, we are installing a general purpose operating system, being a Windows or Linux or Mac. And then on top of that, we are just installing the same applications what we used to install or run on our traditional bare metal Windows system. So this is how the picture got changed after implementing virtualization. And that's the, one of the major benefits of virtualization is now you are able to run three different operating systems, Windows, Linux, Mac, simultaneously on a single hardware. And 
how is being possible because of something called a magic called hypervisor or virtualization. Now, virtualization helps IT to achieve server consolidation by converting multiple physical machines into a fewer hardware resources. So as we discussed, in traditional world, we used to have a, a so many physical servers. But now with this virtualization, we are able to achieve server consolidation where what we have done, we have consolidated all these physical servers into a software construct called virtual machine. Each copy of an operating system installed into a virtual machine is exactly the same what you install in your physical server. So for example, if let's assume this server is running a Windows operating system and this VM is also running the same flavor of Windows operating system. Now, if I give you the RD, if I give you the RDP access of both of these systems, with the RDP access, you will not be able to figure it out. This Windows session is coming from a bare metal physical server, or this Windows RDP session is coming from a VM running a Windows operating system. That's the power of virtual virtualization where we have consolidated multiple physical servers into a few servers and without compromising with the performance or user experience. And most important thing, maintaining the isolation as well. So if you see the virtualization changes the way servers are utilized. Instead of one-to-one -one relationship in a physical infrastructure, now you can have many to one relationship with virtualization. Now, if you see before virtualization, what used to happen, let's say this is my one physical server. It is having a one network card or one network adapter. Now, if that machine has to be in a network or want to communicate to the another system in a network, there has to have a one network card. That network card will be consuming one port of your physical switch, right? So if you require 10 physical servers, you would require 10 physical network adapters or network cards, and you would require 10 physical ports just to make them communicate. But now, if I have to achieve the same, so the same thing in a virtualization world, what do I need? Here are all these six physical servers got consolidated into a six virtual machines. And my end goal is making them communicate. And if I need to make them communicate, I don't even need a one network adapter. Because of there is a virtual switch implementation through which I can make all of these VMs to communicate with each other without consuming a single network adapter on your physical hardware. But if this VM needs to talk to the, to the outside world or maybe the servers running on or VMs running on some other hardware, in that case also you do not require six network adapters. You just require a one network adapter which would be consuming one port of the physical switch. So, so six VMs, so as you could see that, six VMs can communicate to the outside world with a single network adapter, with a single switch port. And that's the reason we called a many to one mapping. And, and, and you could see that because of virtualization, we are saving a lot more network adapters, a lot more switch ports while achieving the same purpose or same goal. So that's the power of virtualization. Now this is what we have talked about the technicalities of virtualization or technical definitions of virtualization more into a technical perspective. But let's say you have to explain virtualization to some non-technical person or maybe you know because, because I have been working on the virtualization for past 14 years i do see this technology every day in and out in our day-to-day -day life so i am going to take you guys to a two day-to-day -day life example which you can relate or correlate with the virtualization technology so let's say if you want to explain virtualization to your mom how would you do that so you could say that virtualization like a school bus you could do that. A virtualization is like a school bus. Now, before a school bus, if you see what you, we used to do, before a school bus, each parent has to drive their own kid to school each day in their own car. 
if, if there are 100 students who need to go to the school parent has to 100 parent has to take out their cars and drop their kid to the school every single day and what is resulting into a traffic jam because if you have more cars coming on the road you will have a more traffic jam you will have a more fuel wastage you will have a waste of time because you have to drop and again you have to pick them up and then another problem is increasing pollution so if there was no concept of school bus you could imagine hundreds of cars coming on the road contributing into the resulting into traffic jam fuel wastage increased pollution and waste of time how a school bus has solved this problem. Now, if you see the school bus service has simplified this parent's life drastically, it solved environment issues as well. So what is the idea of a school bus? Instead of having a small, small car, what we did now, we had a one large transportation vehicle, one large transportation vehicle we call school bus. In that school bus, we have a dedicated seat for each of the student maintaining the same price, same isolation, same comfort. But the good part of introducing the school bus is into and hundreds of buses, hundreds of individual cars are consolidated into a one or two school bus that results into a no traffic jam. We are also doing fuel savings, less car means less fuel consumption so we are doing a fuel savings time savings as well you don't need to go to drop your kid to school all the way you're doing time savings and you're also contributing to the go green society so that is the that is what the one of the one of the example you can consider of virtualization where we having a small small cars what we did we consolidated into a one big fat large transportation vehicle school bus another example of virtualization you could imagine like a multi storage building versus versus your uh, what do we call a raw houses kind of uh, apartments so before apartment culture like if you again go back to the older days right there when there was no apartment culture what used to happen before apartment culture people used to live in their individual houses which resulting into a challenges like your land used to be expensive. If you want to have a security, swimming pool, garden, gym, all these facilities for your individual house, it is going to cost you a lot. Then again, if you have any kind of government approval, you have to, every individual people has to go to the government offices and get those approval, which is again a cumbersome thing to do. And then the maintenance cost for, of that particular flat was, or for that particular house, individual house also used to be very high. But how did we solve this problem? We solved this problem by, con by consolidating all these small, small houses into a one big land and then creating a multi-storage apartment. So as you know, in India, cities are started growing vertically instead of horizontally in the last few decades. And there are many factors for that, right? So we, and because of which, so what happens when cities started growing vertically, land got cheaper, we also getting all of these amenities, we're also getting high, high class amenities at a very low cost as compared to maintaining it individually. Then we, another advantage of gated community is basically we, another advantage of multi-story building or apartment is basically the gated community. So when there are hundreds of people staying all together, it gives you a lot of social engagement that got increased and the ease of accessibility. As, as we know, when there are a lot of thousands of people staying within a few miles, then there are a lot of schools, hospitals, and ease of shopping malls, everything gets opened up within that close proximity. So as you could see that having the individual houses was a bit more difficult and more painful and more expensive to manage that. The, that problem got solved by consolidating all of these individual houses into a multi story apartment or building. So as you could see that the consolidation of multiple individual cars into a single bus is an example of virtualization. Similarly, consolidation of multiple individual houses into one multi-story apartment is an example of virtualization. Similarly, 
consolidation of multiple physical servers into a fewer server is an example of virtualization and this is what we call server virtualization where what we have done instead of having a multiple physical servers what we have done we have by a one server with high-end configuration and consolidated all of these physical servers into a fewer servers and this physical servers also got converted into a software entity called virtual machine so now you could see that we are able to accommodate six virtual servers on a single hardware and that's what the virtualization is so again this is another slide we talked about virtualization so data center so data center virtualization consolidates servers into into fewer pieces of hardware and effectively manages them using virtualized management platforms as you could see that we have a x86 architecture x86 hardware on top of that we have installed hypervisor and on top of that we have created this virtual servers each virtual server is like a individual just similar to your physical server having its own virtual hardware memory cpu network hard drive operating system that's pretty much about virtualization so in this section of our, our lecture we have discussed about virtualization what exactly is virtualization and what what are the key characteristics of virtualization now the next section so let's move to the next topic the benefits of virtualization so, so in this particular